you know, we talk about global government and how, uh, for some of you who've followed us over the years, we've outlined how, in, on the global level, how there are 10 areas that have been set up so that when they're distinctly put in place, they will represent the 10 pieces of this 10 toes of Daniel, a global government. At this point in time in North America, as we've talked about in the past, there are three countries set up to be part of what they call the North American Union, of which you'll hear more and more of about as time goes by. And in this union, Amer America, Canada, and Mexico will embrace their own currency. And these pools of currency will probably be, be all equivalent to other currencies in other of the nine toes of Daniel. Well, let's start off understanding a little bit of that as we go into this article. Will government bailouts spell the end of a dollar? You know, there's a thing that we call the Hegelian principle. It's used so much in what they would call conspiracy theory, the government and the way it op operates from day to day. But Hegelian principle basically states hypothetically, guns. Let's just say we want to eliminate the use of guns. What we do, we create problems where the guns, in fact, they identify as being like shooting and terror and whatnot out in the streets and being affected by people who have handguns. So they allow enough of this to happen and it rises and stirs attention in the hearts of the people who read, see, and hear and know about these incidences. This Hegelian principle now says that we will introduce a bill that will prevent that and give peace in the hearts of those who are concerned about the things that are going. Well, the same thing would apply with the dollar. We want to show that the dollar is becoming less and less of a value as a currency in this nation, and it would be much more valuable as a, a global currency. Now, with that being said, I want to go into the article a little bit and let the Lord speak to you. In other words, as we are being fooled or put to sleep in this currency situation that's going on, I believe this currency is starting to aim itself so that we will surrender the value of the dollar as it becomes worth less and less to a different type of a currency. We have seen in the dead of night three major government bailouts in the last year none of which had more than a few days positive effect on the market. Now, hear the article. In other words, these bailouts have had very little influence on the market. Each was done by powerful men in powerful places in the wee small hours of the night. At the end of the next day, a few were made rich while many were handed the bill. Can you hear what, what, what's being said here? this inner circle of people, very, very powerful people, while this money is being transferred in the direction they want it to move, they are the sole benefactors of what's coming out of it. And the masses are left holding the bag. First there was Bear Stearns, then Indy Mac, Fannie and Freddie followed rapidly, all engineered on Sundays while the markets were closed. Wamu, Washington Mutual, the largest bank in the United States and probably one of the largest in the world, that went bankrupt. And as a Sunday deal, we see that's been bailed out as well. How many more bailouts have to occur before someone asks the question no one wants to ask? Is this a systemic problem and where does it end? Don't you think it's a time to begin to start asking your inner self, the way I put this, if, you, if we were going to take it to a very practical situation, say you were $100,000 in credit card debt and had no way of getting out of it, would your answer be, I'll give you another $100,000 so you can get your way out of debt? Because that's basically what this country is saying right now to its politicians. We'll give you more money so you can get out of debt, so you can make this thing work. But we'll give you all these guarantees and all these plans to make it happen. But nonetheless, we'll give you more money to misspend, misuse, even though they're not saying it, and to line the pockets of those who of the super wealthy. 
That's wickedness in high places. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against powers and principalities, and they are at work now at their highest level. And that's in Ephesians 6, the 11, 12, and 13 verse. The battle is really raging right now. And people are hanging on to the dollar, and very few are hanging on to the Lord. And it goes on by saying, It's no surprise to those of us who warned about the drunken credit bridge on Wall Street that the day of reckoning would come. You know, we're, we're talking about this and how eventually this would happen. It's, we're in the midst of it right now. And how much worse will it get? It's, well, our kids, if we don't allow this thing to sink on its own, are going to be paying the price even in their day. It goes on to say, on July 11th, IndyMac was taken over by a government due to a run on the bank. And if you can remember that, people were outside the bank lined up to withdraw their money to make sure they had some that they could, that would not be confiscated by the bank. Early runs, and we may see more and more of this as time goes by. We're not here to scare you. We're here to bring you to a point where you can trust in God. Lean not on your own understanding, but acknowledge the Lord in everything you do. You know, the Lord wants you to lean not on what you think and what you see, but trust in the Lord with all your heart, and he'll direct your path. So easy to just get caught in our own thoughts. Well, we should do this, we should do that. And it's not saying some of that might not be prompted, but the, the real inner workings are, is the Holy Spirit directing me to do this? And if so, will I listen and do what should be done? Very, very important now to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit of God in your life. So the, the question that we have to, I think, kind of face with out in the near term, are we seeing the end of the dollar and the beginning of another currency that will shortly be installed as this whole thing starts to come tumbling down all around us? A lot to think about, a lot to pray on, but the Lord has the answer if you're willing to listen. God bless you. Now, as we talk to you out in that viewing audience, this is your opportunity for those of you who don't know the Lord. Now, so much is really unfolding. We have not touched a lot of areas that are so rapidly happening on a greater and greater level. I mean, natural disasters, earthquakes and whatnot. And the fear of God is being poured out over the earth. And the fear meant to bring you who don't know the Lord to a point where you can make a decision in your own heart to accept him. And what we're offering you right now is the invitation to become citizens of heaven, to become part of God's family. And if you really, in your heart, feel the Lord has been talking to you through what's been said by this speaker, you may want to make a commitment with me to accept the Lord in your life. And if you feel that's something you want to do, let me just read very briefly what the Lord says in his word. And this is in Romans 10, 9 and 10, 10 that if you confess with your mouth, Lord Jesus, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. So all, if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, you are part of the family of God. And if you want Christ to become part of your life. So as you repeat with us, dear Lord, I'm a sinner. Father, I'm asking you to come into my life. Lord Jesus, become my savior. Lord, I believe you died and God raised you from the dead and I want to live for you. If you can repeat that prayer and you really believe it, you are now part of the Christian family. Jesus loves you. Pick up a Bible, find the church, and let the Lord guide your life. Amen.